Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern, and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from Eight until nine Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number two four eight five five seven thirty three hundred. And now stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. This is your host, Dr. Sahar Kamis. Welcome to another great show on Baladi Radio on. U.S. Arab Radio. Let me first start by saying Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak to all our guests who are celebrating this holy month and fasting this year. We are talking today about a very important topic which is relevant, of course, to the spirit of the holy month of Ramadan. Basically, we are all God's servants. Three religions, one message. And with me this morning discussing this important topic are three spiritual leaders, who are dear and near to my heart. Imam Muhammad Bashar Arafat, Reverend Dr. William O, also known as Father Bill, and Cantor Stephanie Weishar, also known to me as Sister Stephanie. I'll start by introducing my honored guests this morning. And my first introduction is Imam Muhammad Bashar Arafat. He's a Syrian American Muslim clergy in Baltimore, Maryland for the last 30 years. He is the founder of two very important initiatives, Civilizations Exchange and Cooperation Foundation, which has been organizing a number of important events and activities, including Better Understanding for a Better World Youth Conference on an annual basis that brings together youth from different parts of the world for interfaith dialogue and discussion. And also the founder of Al-Bashir Center, which trains young clergy from different parts of the world on interfaith dialogue and leadership skills. He has been doing this meaningful work in the area of interfaith dialogue for the last 30 years, and he's also a professor of Islamic studies. My second honored guest this morning is Reverend Dr. William O, also known to us as Father Bill. He serves as a pastor of the Shrine of the Sacred Heart Church in Baltimore, Maryland. He received his PhD in history from Catholic University in Washington, D.C. He has been involved in interfaith dialogue, relations, and activities for many years, working together with Imam Bashar Arafat, on a number of initiatives, including the Civilizations Exchange and Cooperation Foundation for more than 10 years. And my third honored guest is Cantor Stephanie Weishar. She's a spiritual leader of Kul Nafesh Congregation in Columbia, Maryland. She is also the cantor for Bet Aviv, a reformed Jewish congregation also located in Columbia, Maryland. She serves on the board of the Women Cantors Network, and she is active in interfaith dialogue, primarily in her role as the co-leader of the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom, Washington, D.C. chapter. Thank you all so much for joining me this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Such an honor and a pleasure to have all of you to, with me today. And thank you for taking the time to join this important conversation. And I want to start first by the spirit of the holy month of Ramadan. As you know, many of our listeners are fasting and observing this holy month. So if every and each one of you can just give a very brief uh, uh, remark, note, comment, a message that you want to send to our listeners who are observing the holy month of Ramadan. We'll start with you, Imam Bashar. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you for inviting me, and it's really a pleasure and an honor to be with you and with your listeners during these holidays of Ramadan where we are supposed to reassess our relation with Almighty, where we are supposed to look into ourselves and make ourselves a better human being better believers, better uh, Muslims, in order to uh, reconnect uh, with Almighty, as well as with the community at large around us. During these holidays of Ramadan, during these moments during the day where we are not supposed to eat or drink, we are supposed to, you know, spend more time on uh, prayers, 
meditation as well as reading the message of heaven, reading the Quran that was sent to us by Archangel Gabriel from Almighty God to Prophet Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, more than 1400 years ago, still in Arabic, that contains the messages of all the prophets before and the teachings of all the messengers of God in order for us to be more spiritual, more ethical, more uh, in tune with the community around us and to be part of the uh, local community as well as the global community of uh, humanity, the, the family of Adam and Eve, and most importantly, to watch our behavior, watch our uh, words, uh, thoughts, uh, and also uh, to increase our prayers and uh, in order to uh, connect uh, with our neighbors, uh, with our uh, fellow citizens, and make our life better, make our society better, and work together for peace and compassion and mercy for humanity. Thank you so much. Amen to that. Father Bill, you want to also say something to the Muslim community on the occasion of the Holy Month? Yes, uh, Ramadan Mubarak to all of my Muslim brothers and sisters who are entering into this sacred time. And just to say that as you are focusing, as Imam said, on reflecting on your relationship with God and my prayer, I also wish to join you in spiritual solidarity that we all might be one in remembering that as we consider our relationship with God, we also, in that relationship, discover our true connection to one another. And I hope that uh, this holy time will be a time of renewal that will not only benefit our Muslim community, but also in the power of your prayers, reach out and join us all together in that spiritual solidarity where we can be uh, two voices proclaiming the oneness of God and of God's compassion to all the world. So I appreciate this opportunity to share that with you. Thank you so much. I'm into that. Thank you. Cantor Stephanie, you want to say something as well on the occasion of the Holy Month to our Muslim listeners? Of course. I want to echo these messages. Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak. I hope this Holy Month of Ramadan is bringing each of you peace and joy. I know we need peace in our hearts and we also can share it out into our communities. And every opportunity I have to meet with my Muslim sisters and learn more about Ramadan and how it connects you both to the scriptures you read and to the thoughts and meditations that you say each day. It's a beautiful teaching for me, and I am blessed to be with you. Thank you so much. I'm into that. And I just want to start by telling you all about the initiative that U.S. Arab Radio has started this year during the holy month of Ramadan, which is called We Are All God's Servants. So that is really the theme of our discussion uh, today. And this is a campaign that U.S. Arab Radio started in order to stress the unity and the complementarity of all of the holy religions and all the revelations centered on peace, love, and compassion. There is one thing that really bothers me when I come across a statement like the one by the Dalai Lama that says, uh, when there is peace between the religions, there will be peace in the world. That to me implies that there is inherently something wrong God forbid, with the religions, with the message itself that leads to the creation of violence and lack of coexistence. And I'll just tell you very quickly an incident that happened to me in class as I was teaching a lecture on Islamophobia, and I said, what is the primary cause of Islamophobia? And to my shock, a student who uh, happens to be born in a Christian family, but I don't think he's practicing Christianity, said the cause of, of Islamophobia is Christianity. And I was very much taken aback. I said, how can we possibly say that? And he said, well, look at the Crusades. I said, well, blaming Islamophobia on Christianity is as bad as blaming terrorism on Islam. How can we possibly change some of these skewed and distorted misunderstandings of the role of religion in our lives? I'll start with Cantor uh, Stephanie. Thank you, Sahar. Um, I think that one of the main things that we need to do in all of our communities is get to know each other. I, one of the blessings I've had in getting to know you and other sisters through Sisterhood of Salam Shalom is that not only do I learn how you do, what you do to connect with your religion, but I, I get a deeper sense of what it is that brings you close to God and what it is that gives you the strength to go through all the difficulties of your day and to bear the difficulties of our world. And once we have made friends, actual 
intimate relationships with people who are raised in other faiths, we don't see them as the other. We don't have to correct ourselves and think carefully as we meet an individual we've never met before. We actually see images of our friends. We see faces that reflect people we know, that we're comfortable with, and um, we, we see images of God. And I think that the main thing we can do to begin seeing people as, as our sisters and brothers is to actually reach out and get to know folks who are from other faiths and form relationships. Mm -hmm. So basically, it is difficult to hate up close. Yes. Getting to know people closely really is one magical solution to this bigger epidemic and problem that we are witnessing today. Thank you. Father Bill? Yes, I think you put your finger on a very important point, uh, Sahar, in that uh, in the work I do with, with Imam, uh, we see the interfaith, the building of interfaith relations is at the very heart of addressing the global crisis we're facing, because at the heart of all of the conflicts in our world right now is the demonization of the other, the religious, the uh, cultural, the racial other, and we believe that interfaith relations have to go to the next step in recognizing that we need to go from interfaith to interspiritual dialogue in which, and I think particularly for the Abrahamic traditions, to recognize that the faithful adherence to our religious traditions must lead us to a spirituality in which we experience the divine mandate to reach out to the other in, a, in an encounter which transforms our understanding of the other and of each other's faith and opens up new possibilities of solidarity in coming together in what I think must be, needs to be an historically unprecedented common effort to stand against the political hijacking of religion to serve agendas of division and violence, but also mm -hmm. allows us to bring our communities together as a common force for human reconciliation and healing uh, and building the kind of relationships that uh, the, were called for in Pope Francis's statement, joint statement with the Grand Imam of Al Azhar in the United Arab Emirates and the, their recent visit there. So I think we we need to see uh, interfaith relations as very much at the heart of that task of healing the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I like the part about the interspirituality, not just interfaith, but also interspiritual dialogue, which I believe is very, very important to repair our broken world in so many ways. And Imam Bashar, if you please. Yes, uh, I really would like to thank uh, our sister, uh, Cantor Stephanie, for talking about uh, the importance of knowing the other, as well as what uh, Father Bill echoed on that. And I just wanted to say that we read in the Quran that God created us, but also he blessed us with the spirit. So we are made of two things, the body and the spirit. We have materialistic uh, inclination toward materialistic life, and ego and desires, and we have also inclination toward, uh, you know, spirituality. And that's why we pray, and that's why all religions have been uh, emphasizing on the issue of meditation and reflection. So you will become a godly person, or you will become somebody who is drawn more to your, you know, uh, materialistic, animalistic uh, life, and you will be like other creatures. But we as human beings, as the Quran says, the sons of Adam and Eve, we are blessed with two things, with the spirit and with the, with the mind and the heart, that through that we can know God and we can get closer and closer to God by prayer, by being close from Him. Otherwise, when we are getting close from our only materialistic side, then we will care about our just life, uh, money, uh, ego, mm -hmm. uh, fame, and that will lead us into trouble later on, because Absolutely. that will lead us into arrogance, that will lead us into stealing, that will lead us into killing, that will lead us, because I will be concerned only about me, 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 only me, rather than being concerned about God and what pleased God. And that's right. why uh, through the act of worship and through the month of Ramadan, I'm supposed to uh, reflect on why I'm here on the surface of this earth. So I would realize that I'm the servant of God, 
Then yes. I will realize that everybody around me is really part of the human family, whether they believe the way I don't, I believe, or they don't believe the way I believe. But still, I have to respect them and respect their humanity, respect their uh, process of thinking, even if they worship God different than I do, or even if they chose not to worship God. But we have to live peacefully on the surface of this earth. And then back to what uh, Cantor Stephanie have said, knowing one another, visiting one another, that will strengthen the humanity in us. And then you will grow even to others who are, you know, as spiritual as you are, even though they are not part of your faith. And right. that's where the interfaith movement in the United States is so important. And from my travel around the world through the speaker programs with the State Department, I have seen that there are so many good people also, but they don't know about the other. So if you go back to the times of the wars and the conflict, you will see it mostly has been, you know, part of ego and interest, which had a cover of religion, and the religion has been always used to advance their own agendas. And that's why... Again, if you don't uh, take your time to know your neighbor and to know other communities and to reach out, you will be listening to those who are, you know, keep speaking uh, a language of hate, a language of, uh, you know, separation, of, uh, you know, stay away from those. Uh, those are not like us, those they hate us. And right. the only way to break these kind of... Uh, you know, barriers is through this kind of uh, interaction and relation. Thank you so much, Imam Bashar. We'll come back to this very important discussion right after this commercial break. Stay tuned, please. It's all in one grocery store, and that store is Zam Zam Fresh Foods Market. Zam Zam Fresh Foods Market offers fresh vegetables, halal meats, a great fresh bakery, as well as nuts and spices, and much more. They also offer special deals every Wednesday. So don't forget to ask for your favorite foods as shish kebabs are ready to go. So please stop by Zam Zam Fresh Foods Market at 24065 Orchard Lake Road in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248-476-0300. Again, that phone number is 248-476-0300. And they are open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Zam Zam Fresh Foods Market is your one-place stop for all your grocery shopping needs and your favorite foods. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Najee Aboud at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Najee Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design. New location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Aboud, 734-744-9796. شيء احنا كثير بنهتم بالمقبلات بالاكل الشامي واحنا بنهتم بالبهارات والتسبيكه في الاكل المصري واحنا نهتم هوايه باللحوم وجودتها بالاكل العراقي واحنا في مطعم عشتار نهتم بكم اعتمدوا علينا ايا كان نحن في عشتار نعرف ان لكل مذاق اسرار فنحن نقدم اجود انواع اللحوم من ملحمه عشتار الواقعه على 56865 راين رود عشتار قصه حضاره ترويها لكم اطباقنا المميزه في كل زياره تفضلوا بزيارتنا في 3 6625 East 50 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. مطعم عشتار بإدارة فادي بهنام وعلي البغدادي. 586-698-2585. 586-698-2585. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937.
If halal is important to your family, you can trust that Miramar will offer not only the highest quality halal products, but the best tasting and healthiest foods that can be placed on your family table with confidence. Miramar is the first and oldest halal certified food brand in America serving the Arab and Muslim community and offers a wide range of halal food products. Check out Miramar's halal food selection today by visiting Miramar's executive distributor Ziad Brothers Importing at www.ziad.com. Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is your host, Dr. Sahar Kamis, and we are talking today about a very important topic. We are all God's servants, three religions, one message. And with me today discussing this important topic are Cantor Stephanie Weishar, Father Bill, Reverend uh, William O, and Imam Muhammad Bashar Arafat. So from the answers I gathered from the three of you right before the commercial break, it seems that we have a recipe here for repairing the world, getting to know each other, uh, it is difficult to hate up close to so building relationships, focusing on interspiritual, not just interreligious or interfaith dialogue, and repairing the self as a way to repair the world. I believe that these are magical solutions to our much troubled world. And speaking of our troubled world, we cannot ignore the uh, horrific, uh, really, incidents of violence and attacks on innocent worshippers in places of worship. We have witnessed the horrific massacre in New Zealand, the horrific uh, attacks and massacres in Sri Lanka. We have witnessed the horrible attacks on synagogues, the Tree of Life synagogue and the synagogue in San Diego. All of these incidents, I mean, sincerely, I, one is just horrified that innocent worshippers in places of worship, whether it's a church or a mosque or a synagogue, cannot worship uh, without fear nowadays. We see uh, you know, heightened security, police officers everywhere by places of worship. What is going on? Uh, is this symptomatic of a new phase, a new era, a new page that we are starting here of, of horror that's really targeting uh, people of faith? And, and what could be some of the solutions? What could be some of the things we as people of faith should or could do in order to face this new scary phenomenon? I'll start with Reverend uh, Bill. Well, as you indicated, uh, Sahar, I think that the violence we're seeing is the result of uh, both the manipulation of religion by political agendas, as well as the uh, sort of right-wing, uh, you know, racist ideology of, of that also pits people against each other in, in this country in particular. And I, I think the all the more reason why we have to have more public uh, displays of unity and cooperation of the different religious leaderships to stand against this sort of thing and to deny any moral credibility to those who would try to use religion to justify division or violence. But I think it also we need to have programs that bring people together to have that kind of transformative encounter that changes their worldview. And that's what the work we do with uh, Imam Bashar and CECF. Uh, it's constantly bringing different people from different countries together to see, meet each other's humanity. And, uh, you know, for example, the BUBW conference is better understanding for a better world would bring uh, high school level youth together of different uh, religions and uh, different countries and to watch their worldview change, not their faith, but their worldview. Like uh, uh, one young man, uh, they all they all give their experiences at the end of the conference. One young Pakistani man was saying how he experienced American racism here from his host family, uh, mm -hmm. and he should go be going back to Pakistan hating Americans. But he was going back with American friends he would cherish because of his experience here with this conference. Uh, People were learning to overcome their stereotypes and their uh, countries or cultures' sense of historical grievance as they met the humanity and made friends with each other. Uh, and these will be the leaders of the future. And we have to create as many occasions as we can to bring people together in what uh, we like to call the transformative, the spiritual transformative encounter that changes our worldview and allows the power of faith to. Uh, introduce us to the humanity of one another and that work is the only thing that's going to make a road of healing into the future mm -hmm. absolutely i'm into that and Cantor stephanie i really like what father bill said about transformative encounters and i think in these really difficult days it's hard for us to not have a simple answer and a simple action that we can take um, we're all tempted to suggest we should remove certain political leaders and that will serve solve the problem, but we, we actually know it's not going to solve the problem. 
it's taken us a while to get to this place and it's going to take us a while to get back out of it. Mm. I think that by spending time close together in these transformative encounters, we help people understand that we have much more in common than we have differences. Mm -hmm. And I also find myself working extra hard these days to figure out what is it that makes someone so angry at my religion or the religion of my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that they would lash out in this way. And we know from all of the work that we watched Reverend Martin Luther King do during the civil rights movement that we don't respond to hate with hate. We respond mm -hmm. with love. And there is something in these individuals where they only found love in places that taught them to behave this way. Mm -hmm. And maybe we are not reaching young people or people beyond their youth in a way that we need to so that they will find communities of compassion where they can, if not pray, at least be heard and be felt and grow in a different way. Alternative spaces and alternative communities to contain these people so they don't go down the path of violence and aggression. I'm into that. And Imam Bashar? Well, uh, I mean, again, I feel it is really more than ever before our responsibility has to uh, step up to, to create more of these programs, and especially on the youth level, uh, I mean, starting from the youth level, mm -hmm. and uh, as Father Bill spoke about these uh, uh, conferences that we bring youth from, you know, different countries around the world who are here through cultural exchange programs, mm -hmm. I have seen that uh, the American students themselves really need these kind of conferences, and I, I hope that uh, we can work more on, on these conferences among public schools that uh, will bring American students to see the beauty of diversity and to ask questions uh, because I have seen a lot of, uh, of these youth really have completely, uh, um, you know, wrong ideas and misconceptions toward the other uh, mm -hmm. because they did not get the, the proper answer in their uh, local communities and they are exposed to certain media that really promote this kind of hatred or ignorance about the other. And, and that's why, uh, you know, we are dedicating a lot of our time right now for the youth as mm -hmm. well as for the clergy. And I feel uh, these meetings among the clergy to go a little bit deeper from, mm -hmm. you know, Interfaith 101 to, to, to the next level, whether it is a, a transformative encounter or spiritual uh, contemplative uh, movement or contemplative alliance or contemplative uh, experience mm -hmm. uh, in order to move together toward uh, more peaceful and harmonious uh, society. Absolutely. I'm into that. And speaking of transformative encounters, I know that Al-Bashir Center, uh, you also have this very interesting uh, program that you want to put together on the Sultan and the Saint. Uh, if you can tell our listeners a little bit, because I find this to be very interesting, uh, Imam Bashar, uh, for our listeners to understand this initial encounter briefly between, uh, you know, the Sultan and the Saints, and also what Al Bashir Center is trying to do along with this kind of project. Thank you. Um, again, since the mid of '90s, when I first uh, heard about the story of uh, uh, Sultan Muhammad Al Kamil of Egypt in 1219, welcoming uh, Saint Francis of Assisi. Uh, I thought this is a wonderful example that took place uh, now, 800 years ago, that mm -hmm. has to be brought up again and emphasized not only from the Christian side, who keep always talking about St. Francis and, you know, the, uh, the place and the reputation of St. Francis of Assisi and the Franciscans, whether they are Catholic or Protestant. But I have seen from the Muslim side, and especially in the Middle East, they almost have never heard of the story. And whenever I'm speaking with others, you know, they will say, this is the first time we are hearing this from you. Mm -hmm. Due to, you know, some historic uh, events that took place during the crusade. But really, for me, as somebody who is part of the interfaith movement in the United States, I have, uh, I have seen this story 
uh, is a wonderful model that has to be applied today on more uh, active role in creating this kind of encounter and mm-hmm. go to the spiritual level uh, through al-Bashir and through uh, also creating programs for the clergy to learn about each other and especially the Muslim clergy because I have seen and I'm one of the products of uh, you know a seminary in the master's area who mm-hmm. taught me a wonderful uh, knowledge about Islam but when it comes to interacting with the other I think we could have had done a little bit better in having mm-hmm. programs that introduce us to the other uh, from their perspective, number one. And number two, despite these kind of differences, how to work together. Mm-hmm. Because I have seen, uh, you know, people who would just say, okay, the other, you know, have different kind of theology and they we respect who they are, but we don't want to go there. And mm-hmm. also we don't want them to come to us. But I think this is really... Uh, not what we want to preach in the 21st century. You need to understand where they are coming from, but then to talk together how to create, you know, joint programs on the ground, and that's where al-Bashir mm-hmm. is trying to create these kind of uh, activities for the clergy by training Muslim clergy, as well mm-hmm. as training Christian and Jewish clergy who come to our center and take these courses in order to create that kind of better understanding, because mm-hmm. not all seminaries, you know, and especially today I'm talking about Islam because I have uh, got these looks toward me, I have got these questions that uh, indicate that this person who is asking the question really did, did not know the basics about my religion, mm-hmm. which is uh, starting with peace, you know. When I meet with people, I start with assalamu alaikum. But that's right. the beginning. But then after that, you go toward compassion and mercy and, and collaboration, even with the Jewish or the Christians. And that's what the history showed me in the past. And this whole encounter really between the Sultan and the Saint or Sultan Muhammad al-Kamil and uh, Saint Francis of Assisi happened in the midst of the Crusades. That was the interesting part. And, you know, when the army, the Crusade army was, uh, you know, deprived of food, they had, there was, you know, the famine and they were not able to get any food. They were supplied food by the uh, Muslim side. So it really showed uh, an example of compassion, even in the midst of conflict. And I think that's something that is very important. And we are missing this kind of, quote unquote, compassion for the other. And whenever there's a conflict, People think like my way or the highway, we cannot accommodate each other. Polarization and division starts to happen, which is extremely dangerous. So thanks to the three of you for these great uh, insights. And we'll come back to this important discussion right after this commercial break. Stay tuned, please. بلادنا العربية أن تكون في أمان بحفظ الله تعالى أسواق قاشات مدترين ماركن فورتين ماي نورت وسترن نحن لدينا البضاعة العربية الممتازة والجيدة والنظيفة ولدينا مطعم عربي فيه جميع أنواع الأكلات والسلطات وكل شيء يحتاجه البيت العربي أو البيت العراقي ونشكر إذاعة صوت العرب في أمريكا Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. كل سنة والجاليات العربية كلها بخير معاكم شيف أحمد إبراهيم من سوبر ماركت زمزم المطعم عندنا أكلات كتير عراقية ومصرية ولبنانية زي الجلابة وتشيكن طاووق وكباب ومسقعة وأحيانا بنعمل الملوخية والكشري وفراخ مشوية وكل اللي انتوا عايزينه موجود عندنا تفضلوا زورونا في محلات زمزم كل سنة والجالية العربية بخير ورمضان كريم
Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria, as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now, 248-990-4247. بتعرفوا شيء احنا كثير بنهتم بالمقبلات بالاكل الشامي واحنا بنهتم بالبهارات والتسبيكه في الاكل المصري واحنا نهتم هوايه باللحوم وجودتها بالاكل العراقي واحنا في مطعم عشتار نهتم بكم اعتمدوا علينا ايا كان نحن في عشتار نعرف ان لكل مذاق اسرار فنحن نقدم اجود انواع اللحوم من ملحمه عشتار الواقعه على 56865 راين رود عشتار قصه حضاره ترويها لكم اطباقنا المميزه في كل زياره تفضلوا بزيارتنا في 3625 East 50 Mile Road, Sterling Heights مطعم عشتار بإدارة فادي بهنام وعلي البغدادي 586-698-2585 586-698-2585 Welcome back to the show everyone This is your host Dr. Sahar Kamis and we are talking today about a very important timely topic in line with the spirit of the holy month of Ramadan We are all God's servants, three religions, one message. And with me this morning discussing this important topic are Imam Muhammad Bashar Arafat, Reverend Dr. William O, also known to us as Father Bill, and Cantor Stephanie Weishar. Cantor Stephanie, if you can quickly tell our listeners what is the meaning of the term Cantor and how is that different from the term Rabbi? Um, so the the difference between a rabbi and a cantor is mainly in their training. Either either one can perform religious ceremonies, lead a congregation, um, but the rabbi is trained more in the law, and the cantor is trained more in the musical tradition, how to chant from our holy writings, mm-hmm. uh, how to chant Torah and the prophetic writings, as well as the way that we pray. Our musical notation changes, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, the mm-hmm. Sabbath, or one of our holy festivals. Right, so there's a musical uh, artistic side to the work of a cantor, which is not necessarily included in the work of, uh, of a rabbi. Uh, I'll move on to a very important point that was mentioned earlier in our discussion, which is transformative encounters. And I want to touch upon some of the uh, experiences that each one of you went through that kind of really guided your path or directed your path to the kind of wonderful work that you are doing in the area of interfaith dialogue and interfaith engagement and relations. What were some of the most important, maybe experiences, uh, you know, uh, things that you came across in your life that had an influence on you and encouraged you to take this path? So I'll start with Reverend uh, Bill, please. Well, I, I grew up very early with the sense that my father was Protestant, my mother Catholic, and so I, I always grew up with the sense that God was bigger than than the church, if you will. Uh, but as I uh, got into uh, theological studies and had more exposure and involvement with uh, Jewish, and, and uh, eventually, with me, especially meeting uh, 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 Imam Bashar, getting into meeting uh, more of the Muslim community, and then being able to uh, travel with him to Muslim countries and uh, experience uh, the uh, Ramadan in Morocco or other places. Uh, it became just very clear to me how the, what we've been talking about of transformative encounter is very much uh, at the heart of both how I grow in my faith, but how uh, we need to relate to each other to bring the power of faith to touch and, and heal our world. And in, in that sense, if I can just touch back on that uh, issue of the sultan and the, the saint that you mentioned with Imam that you know he and I yes. work with, it's important, I think, to remember that uh, both of those men, the Sul- St. Francis and the Sultan, met because of their attempt to be faithful to their religious tradition. Francis was against the religious war. He thought, if I could convert the sultan, there'd be nothing to fight about. The sultan, against his advisors, agreed to meet with Francis because he was a pious Muslim who remembered what the Quran taught about honoring Christian holy men. They came together, both being faithful to how they understood their faith, but they were both transformed, not in their faith, but in their worldview, that... Francis was impressed by the humanity of his Muslim host and Muslim spirituality. He wound up rejecting the idea of proselytizing and said we shouldn't be converting Muslims, we should be living in peace with them. The Sultan 
came to see in France is that Christians could be more than an enemy. Uh, so what, what changed was not their faith, but, but their worldview, especially Francis. And that's what we're about, uh, allowing our faith to introduce us to one another in a way that doesn't change our faith, but our worldview about what's possible in relating to one another and bringing our faith jointly together as, as in a common effort to heal the world. And, and that's what we're about, changing people's worldview, not mm -hmm. changing their faith. Very nice point about changing the worldview and not changing the faith. I think this is a very important point, Father Bill, that some people think, oh my God, when I encounter the other, it should be like I should change their, their, you know, their religion or convert them or they should really adopt my own faith. But what you're saying here is changing their worldview, their vision of the world. And I would say amen to that. That's an extremely important point. Thank you so much. And Imam Bashar, like, Speaking of transformative encounters, would you like to share with us maybe an incident or an experience that had a great impact on you and your decision to undertake this kind of work? Um, I mean, from attending uh, early on, uh, when I first came to the United States, when I was uh, invited to different churches or synagogues, and, um, you know, after whatever conversation or talk, and when the people would say, could you chant for us uh, something from the Quran? Or when I called a prayer. But especially when I would chant, I have seen how the people would come to me later on and would say, even though we did not understand the Arabic words of the Quran you are chanting, but we felt in our hearts uh, the spirit. And I have seen this in, in different synagogues when even they would tell me, that was very close to the chant of our Torah, or when we are in different retreats, you know, with the Franciscans, and we, uh, we uh, talk about the 99 names and, uh, and different uh, phrases of praise of Almighty, I have seen the, the reaction, and, and I myself, I really felt that there is a lot of things that we don't know, especially when it's when, when the spirit get together, when the people, you know, uh, get together to pray. And that's why, really, I have seen a good partner with Father Bill to emphasize on the uh, spiritual encounter and uh, spiritual dialogue, uh, because normally, you know, we, we stay on theology level. But you need to go sometimes to the spiritual level which uh, goes and transcends, you know, the theology. And I have, I have seen a lot of support, a lot of, uh, you know, agreement, a lot of um, uh, emphasis on the importance of this work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, really, uh, serving God th through serving His creation, that is a very important theme. And we will come back to this very important theme of service right after this commercial break. Stay tuned, please. منظمة رحمة للإغاثة تعمل بجد وتفان بهدف خدمة الإنسانية خصوصا في المناطق المنكوبة بسبب الأوضاع في سوريا وتعمل أيضا في دول الجوار التي تستقبل اللاجئين السوريين وتقدم خدماتها الإنسانية للجميع دون أي تمييز للتواصل مع المنظمة الهاتف رقم 248-990-4247 أو الموقع الإلكتروني رحمارليف.org أيام زمان كان طعم الأكل غير كان جدي يجيب اللية لأكلة المحاشي والكبة المشوية بتعرفي اشتقنا لأيام زمان والطعم الطيب بس اليوم مع زيادة منتج بديل دهن الخروف الحقيقي بطعم اللية بيعطيكي نفس الطعم الغني والمميز مجفف معقم سهل الاستعمال وحلال مية بالمية يمكن استعماله في جميع الأكلات الشرقية ما عليكي إلا أنه تفتحي الظرف وتضيفي من طعم اللية واستمتعي باللقمة الشهية وصحتين وهنا العطاء قصة رائعة بدايتها إنسان يهتم ونهايتها إنسان يحتاج مؤسسة الحياة للغاتة والتنمية ومنذ أكثر من 25 عاما تحمل عطائك إلى من يستحقه واحتاجه بغض النظر عن الجنس أو العرق أو الدين فأينما تكون الحاجة 
تجد الحياة تقدم المساعدة الطبية والملاجئ وبناء المدارس والأوار الارتوازية وبرامج كفالة عوائل اللاجئين والأيتام وغيرها حسب الحاجة للمساعدة في استمرار هذا الجهد الكبير إن تبرعك المعفى من الضرائب اليوم إلى منظمة الحياة للإغاثة والتنمية عبر الموقع www.lifeusa.org أو الاتصال على الرقم المجاني 1-800-827-3543 مركز اي في اف مشيغان للخصوبه واطفال الانابيب الرواد في مجال الطب التناسلي تعلن عن استقبال مراجعيها في بلومفيلد هيلز ومراكزها المنتشره في مشيغان واوهايو حيث يتواجد امهر الاخصائيين لتقديم الاستشارات في جميع مجالات التلقيح الصناعي يعتبر الدكتور نيكولاس شما احد اهم الاخصائيين في الغدد الصماء التناسليه في ولايتي مشيغان واوهايو حيث اجرى اكثر أكثر من عشرة آلاف عملية طفل أنبوب وساعد الآلاف من الأزواج على تحقيق حلم الأبوة يحمل الدكتور شما شهادة البورد الأمريكي في كل من أمراض النساء والتوليد أمراض الغدد الصماء التناسلية والعقم رعاية طبية ممتازة وتفهم عميق للأثر العاطفي والنفسي لحالة العقم للاستفسار اتصلوا على 248 9529600 تعرفوا شيء احنا كثير بنهتم بالمقبلات بالاكل الشامي واحنا بنهتم بالبهارات والتسبيكه في الاكل المصري واحنا نهتم هوايه باللحوم وجودتها بالاكل العراقي واحنا في مطعم عشتار نهتم بكم اعتمدوا علينا ايا كان نحن في عشتار نعرف ان لكل مذاق اسرار فنحن نقدم اجود انواع اللحوم من ملحمه عشتار الواقعه على 56865 راين رود عشتار قصه حضاره ترويها لكم اطباقنا المميزه في كل زياره تفضلوا بزيارتنا في 3625 ايست 50 مايل رود ستيرلينج مطعم عشتار بإدارة فادي بهنام وعلي البغدادي 586-698-2585 Welcome back to the show everyone This is your host Dr. Sahar Kamis And we are talking today in the holy month of Ramadan About we are all God's servants Three religions, one message And with me today discussing this important message Our Imam Muhammad Bashar Arafat Reverend Dr. William O, also known as Father Bill, and my own sister in the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom, Cantor Stephanie Weishar. Speaking of service and serving God through serving his creation, in the few very, very remaining uh, points that are left, really, uh, in our program, we have like eight minutes or so left, I want to uh, focus on this element of service, serving the community and serving God through serving his creation. Um, both Imam Bashar and Father Bill have been guests on my radio show. They honored me before by being guests on my radio show before. For my own sister, uh, Cantor Stephanie, this is the first time, so uh, special welcome to you. And I want you to tell our listeners a little bit about the sisterhood of Salam Shalom, uh, those who do not know about the sisterhood, the kind of service and the kind of work that you are doing within the sisterhood, and why is that so important? I'd be happy to. So, the sisterhood of Salam Shalom was started by a Jewish woman and a Muslim woman who met over coffee to just see if they could get to know each other and ended up staying in this coffee shop for several hours mm -hmm. and found they had such a connection and they wanted to give other women around the country the same opportunity. So we have chapters in hundreds of places and our chapter in Washington, D.C. gets together roughly once a month and initially it was a goal of get together, share some food, and some conversation. And then as we've gone further into our relationship, we now have some deep dialogues on issues that are important to us, whether they are related to our faith, whether they're related to current events, um, to being women, whatever it is. But over time, we've formed a bond between the about 10 Jewish women and 10 Muslim women in our chapter to the point that we truly do feel we are sisters. And I know for myself, I traveled to Israel and Palestine last summer and was with a group of uh, Jewish seminarians who some had not had been to these places and had not seen um, Muslim people completely covered in a way that we found in East Jerusalem, for example. And I watched their, their physical countenance change 
um, much in the way a lot of American uh, whites will react when they see uh, a young African American on the street. They, they don't intend it, but there's a physical change of concern. And I didn't have this happen to me because when I saw a woman with a cover over her head, I saw the face of my friend, Sahar, and other women. And I realized that just by developing it, close relationships like we do in Sisterhood of Salam Shalom, we're, we're changing our, our chemistry. We're changing our, our psychology. And it's a wonderful organization that initially was really formed just to get to know each other and now is out doing more work to fight against hate in our country, which is uh, becoming increasingly important. Absolutely. I think we started from the level of getting to know each other, like you said, on an informal, interpersonal basis, and we took it to the next level of really action-oriented uh, you know, approach, uh, taking our faith in action or faith into action and standing up against hatred uh, you know, with each other and for each other, which I think is work that we are very much proud to be involved in. Thank you so much for that. And Father Bill, in a couple of minutes, if you can tell us also, like, you know, really kind of project or service that you have been involved in. I know you've been involved in many with Imam Bashar, and we talked about some of that, but something that really stood out to you, like this has been important service that you have engaged in, please. Well, I, I think the work that I do with Imam Bashar is so important to me because uh, it's really at the heart of what, you did at the beginning of the show, you said was the whole purpose of Ramadan. Remember who you are, that what, at the heart of interfaith relations and the kind of transformative encounter we've been trying to uh, create uh, in the different programs we do is for people to remember who they are, to look at each other and not see the stereotypes of Muslims or Christians or Jews, but, or Americans or, or, or Arabs, but to, to see the human person, to feel the human person, to uh, feel the spirit of the human person's relationship with God, and to to create a situation in which we remember who we are and we offer each other the respect uh, and that we owe one another as we come together to, to honor God in service to one another. And so much of, of what we do is just about what you said Ramadan is about, remembering who we are, and helping those who've been victimized by having their human face taken away to help them take that face back, the face that God gave them, the face that is beautiful, the face that is worthy of, of respect and honor. And that's what I think interfaith relationships about. That's what, for me, uh, the ministry is about, uh, is giving people back their human faces. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing, like seeing God through seeing his own creation, uh, knowing God through knowing his own creation, and serving God through serving his own creation. This is a, a really, really beautiful message. Thank you for that, Father Bill. And Imam Bashar, I'll end with you also in a couple of minutes, if you can tell us like a meaningful, really, takeaway from all of our discussion today. We had such a very meaningful and wonderful discussion, thanks to the three of you. If we can end up with just like a little quote or something that you believe, this is the takeaway. This is what we should all, all of us, across our different faith traditions should be working towards. What would that be? Uh, <clears throat> from my experience working with the youth right now, they are really the hope of the future. They are really the one who are going to make the change. They are really the one who should uh, learn the mistakes of the uh, older generation and not to repeat it and that's why I'm working so hard on the better understanding for a better world BUBW conference anybody can uh, you know check it out and uh, see the different even uh, videos that those uh, youth are putting from you know 68 countries because I have seen that when you are working with the youth and especially those who are on high school level uh, their perception of the world still was not formed properly. And I have seen people who are 50 and 60 years old who attended this kind of event, they would say, we wish when we were 16 years old, mm -hmm. we got this kind of uh, opportunity because this will set them to uh, think straight and properly uh, when it comes to diversity and interreligious uh, differences. It will help them to get the proper perspective for the rest of their lives. And mm -hmm. I will be delighted to work with, uh, with, with your listeners, and I will be delighted to work with uh, Cantor Stephanie and to continue working with Father Bill. And I'm really uh, delighted to say that uh, this month of Ramadan always gives us hope 
and gives us uh, uh, rejuvenation with our relation with, with Almighty to reach more and invite others. And that's why we invite, you know, others for the iftar in order, uh, breaking the fast, in order to have more commitment to work together. I mean, I mean to that. At the end of this very, very useful, very enlightening discussion, I would love to thank the three of you, Imam Muhammad Bashar Arafat, uh, Reverend Dr. William O., Father Bill, and my sister in the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom, Cantor Stephanie Weishar, for being with me this morning doing this very important discussion, but also more importantly, doing this great work of serving God through serving his creation. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Salam. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to all our listeners everywhere. Once again, Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak. Enjoy.